In this video, we're going to introduce the notion of free body diagrams and use them subsequently to calculate the equilibrium of a particle. In this case, it will be a, a mass supported by two cables. Okay, so what is a free body diagram? So it's really important to emphasize that a free body diagram is a tool that you're going to use in your engineering career almost daily. What it actually is, it's a sketch showing all the forces acting on a particle or a body and removing all of the information you don't need. Okay, why do we draw it? It helps us identify the forces, their directions, positions, and be able to construct our equations of equilibrium to solve real world problems. And there's a procedure for constructing a free body diagram. The first thing we like to do is draw the outline shape of the body, whether it be a particle or a beam or a column, and then isolate it from its surroundings, but draw on the forces that would come from the surroundings. So we'll draw all the forces that act on the particle or the body, so reaction forces or external forces that might be applied, and identify the known forces and their directions. And we're going to do this via an example. So the example is we have a mass of 50 kilograms and it's going to be suspended from two cables as shown in the figure and what we wish to do is calculate the forces in the cables so the first thing we always do as engineers is we want to set up a free body diagram and the free body diagram in this case is we just wish to consider this subset of the entire system on its own. We don't care about what's happening at the walls. We don't care what's happening behind the walls. We just care about what is happening to the 50 kilograms and the two cables that are coming from the 50 kilogram weight. Okay, so we're gonna now go a little further and what we can do, looking at this picture, we can identify we're going to have from there, we're going to have 50 kilograms, and that will be multiplied by gravity, so 9.81. We're also going to have a force in the cable, and we're also going to have a force in the other cable, and these forces have to act actually through the cables. So they can't act at an angle to the cable. They must act directly in the cable. So that automatically gives us the direction signs and cosines that the forces are acting at. So we're going to collect all of that information and draw it on one simple diagram, which is the free body diagram. So Free body diagram. Now, as you go through your engineering, engineering career, you'll get fed up of saying free body diagram over and over again. So sometimes we like to also abbreviate that to FBD. So if you see FBD written down, that's just shorthand notation for free body diagram. So let's draw the free body diagram of this mass and the two cables. So we said that we had the weight, and let's just call it W for now, acting directly downwards. We had the tension in one of the cables acting upwards and to the left, and I'm gonna call this T2. And we had tension in a cable acting upwards and to the right. And I'm gonna call that T2. One. Now, we need some extra information here, and that extra information is the angles that the cables are acting at. So I'm going to call this angle beta, and this angle alpha. And with all of this information now, we have everything we need to calculate whether the body is in equilibrium, and therefore what the force is T1 and T2 must be for equilibrium. So we go back to our original diagram of the entire system and we have some dimensions now on this system. And from these dimensions of, 
for example how far the cable is up the wall compared to where the weight is positioned or how far towards the center the mass is positioned we can calculate the angles so we're not going to go through the calculation for that we're just going to state that the angle alpha equals 33.7 degrees and the angle beta is equal to 56.3 degrees and the other thing that we said we knew was the known force so the weight was equal to the 50 kilograms and um, we're going to multiply by the acceleration due to gravity 9.81 which gives us a total of 490.5 newtons so the unknowns in the system being t1 and t2 now that the, we have the free body diagram it's very easy for us now just looking at this diagram to set up the equations of equilibrium so equations of equilibrium and first of all we're not going to go seeing if there's an easy way to solve this problem or not what we're going to do is just write the equations down and then decide which to go with first so taking the sum of the forces in the x direction must be equal to zero so we have t1 multiplied by the cos of alpha minus t2 multiplied by the cos of beta must be equal to zero and in the y direction so sum of the forces in the y direction must be equal to zero therefore t1 sine of alpha plus t2 sine of beta minus the weight must be equal to zero and if we look at these equations now we can see the top equation only has two unknowns so i'm going to rearrange that in terms of t1 so calling that equation one this equation two so from one we get upon rearranging equation one we get that t1 is equal to t2 cos of beta divided by the cos of alpha and we know what cos beta and cos alpha are so that equals t2 multiplied by two thirds and we're going to substitute this result back into equation number two so sub for t1 in equation two and we get so t2 multiplied by the two thirds times by the sine of alpha plus t2 multiplied by the sine of beta minus the 490.5 equals zero and so we have one equation one unknown being t2 and we also know what the sine alpha and sine betas are so let's just put those in quickly so we know that the sine of alpha is equal to 0 0.5547 and that the sine of beta equals 0 0.832 and we can then work out therefore that 1.2 multiplied by t2 is equal to 490.5 and we're going to divide out to get us that t2 equals 408.1 newtons 
and we're going to substitute back in to the equation we developed earlier and I'm going to call this equation equation number three so substituting t2 into equation three gives us that t1 is equal to 272.1 newtons.